Hello everyone and welcome back to another diecast review. Now, today is a very, very special one for a few reasons. William Byron just won the Daytona race, not the 500, but I mean, you know, of course Hamlin got that. But he did win the second Daytona race, which was the previous race, or when I'm recording this, which is the most recent race uh, that has been ran. And Byron somehow got that. Now that was a fairly, from what I... From what I understand, a fairly boring race until the very end, because they went in the overtime and whatnot, and that's when Byron ended up, you know, kind of stealing it from them. He made a pretty awesome move. Uh, I think it was like a four-wide move to get to the lead. And Logano, I thought Logano had it. He made a really, not really aggressive, but he made a really nice move, and then unfortunately he just ended up getting caught up in it, or in a wreck with, uh, I think it was Hamlin, God, there's a few others, too. It was a pretty decent wreck, but William Byron overall ended up winning that Daytona race, and this is a Daytona race version. Not of that race, but this is the dual win. I think this was dual two, and I want to say Joey Logano got dual one. I could be wrong, but I believe he won the first duel. Now, this diecast is super, super hard to find. I looked on eBay. I looked on... I'm not going to do Lionel, because I hate Lionel. I hate their website. They take forever to ship and sometimes they don't even give you the right one but anyway there's that uh there was kstatediecast.com plan b sells nothing but i saw a little instagram post uh from the hashtag lionel it's a hashtag i follow it's like lionel racing or hashtag whatever and there's this place or this website called this singer diecast now I'm like, okay, I've never ordered from this before, so I'm going to try it. Lo and behold, I ordered from it. That's a nice picture. Uh, anyway, lo and behold, I ordered from it, and here she is. So yeah, I do suggest they got this out very, very quickly. Uh, they did a restock, and I saw it on, uh, again, uh, just a hashtag I follow. And I'm like, huh, I wonder if they're any good. So I purchased from them. And again, boom, here it is. So I definitely recommend, I'll leave a, you know, just, I'll leave that in the description below so you can kind of go there for yourself. But yeah, really, really nice uh, service, I guess. I didn't have any issues. They didn't send me the wrong one. Uh, they got here in a few days. It was really nice. So yeah, got the dual, which one is this? Was this dual two? Yes, dual number two. Now I believe in the, in the actual Daytona 500 race, I believe he wrecked out in the first day and then it you know it rained and then they switched over to monday so yeah i mean this was a really awesome die cast and of course we're going to be comparing it to this one which is his main one now it this die cast right here literally looks like you left this one out in the sun for a good i don't know year and it's kind of funny because I thought that as soon as I saw this paint scheme. And then Plan B Cells tweeted out when you leave your William Byron diecast in the sun for too long. And then it showed this. And that was, I thought it was pretty funny. But I did not expect Byron to win a duel. And going into the race, the, the, um, the Daytona race, I was like, you know what? I have a feeling an underdog is going to get this one. I don't think anybody big is going to get it. Which, honestly, I thought Hammond was going to at the end of the race. But Byron came close to winning a race this year. Uh, well, kind of close. He came close to winning a race, and then um, it, that didn't happen, of course. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to call it an underdog. Who? I don't know. It could have been Matt DiBenedetto, uh, Bullion Byron, of all people. It could have been, pff, I don't know, Ross Chastain. You know, like it just Matt Kenseth. I mean, it doesn't matter. Just some type of underdog. I would call Matt Kenseth an underdog because um, he's just not full-time, and he's kind of, you know, he's been in and out and in and out of NASCAR. So, I mean, I, I would kind of call him a veteran underdog if that makes any sense but yeah this paint scheme such a fantastic i think it was called what was it, it was like c something okay it's like a c was it like a c green seagrass green c green c green blue something like that i don't know but anyway it was just it was really nice such a nice paint scheme definitely one i wanted to pick up so yeah here it is i got it from of course this website right here uh go pick it up if you can 
I do highly suggest it. Again, I cannot find this anywhere else. And I'll tell you what, man. For not being a Byron fan, or not big of a Byron fan, how many die cuts have I purchased? I made one custom. I've got the Kobe Tribute sitting here. I got this die cast here. I got two Hertz and two Oxaltas. So what is that? Four, five, six, it's like seven. Seven die cast. And I'm not really a Byron fan. So you would think I'm a Byron fan with all these paint schemes. And I'm about to, I was actually going to review this one. And I got this in the mail. And I'm like, okay, I got to review that. I'm not going to do a die cast haul with this in it. Because I'm like, you know what? I need to get that out soon because I really want to review this one. This one is just looks fantastic. So yeah, definitely going to review it right here, right now. So here's the die cast out of the box and just fantastic paint job. Fantastic paint job. It looks incredible. So nice. I really, really like this. Now, of course, you know, I've got, it's got some Daytona or just plate track accessories. Like, like you got the roof hatch there, you know, all that jazz. So yeah. Really, really cool paint scheme. I didn't know how this would look like on track. And then, of course, I saw the actual race car and I'm like, okay, I can work with that. That looks really, really good. So I'm like, you know, I'm definitely going to try to pick this up if I can. And lo and behold, old Willie B got a dual win with it. And I'm like, heck yeah, I'm ordering that. So, yeah, I meant to pre-order it, but then it just it came out before I got to it. But anyway, yeah, let's take a look at this die cast. Just so beautiful. Look at this bluish green. Well, that's more of a blue, but it's, it's flaky. It looks like a liquid color almost. It's really, really nice looking. It's just fantastic paint job. And, you know, no really dark outlines by Lionel so far. So, so far, so good. It looks really, really nice. I was the hood. You got uh, the ZL11 LE on each side. You got, you know, the flames and whatnot. You got the Cub Series right there on the banner. Of course, you got that roof hatch there. You got the 24. I also have the coating systems. Got the flames there as well with that fantastic blue, man. That looks so good. Well, uh, Byron there. Got Oxalta. Got a little bit of a uh, decal issue right here. It's just a little overlap. And, oh, God. It looks like we got some on the spoiler, too. Around the shark fin and then over here. I'm not going to complain too much about that, but I do wish it was a little bit better. Right here on the back. Oh, sea glass. That's what it was. Sea glass. So sea glass there, now that was the, I'm pretty sure this was this color sea glass. Never even heard of that color before. I uh, got, that's out this 2020 Global Automotive Color of the Year. Nice. Uh, the tail lights look a little wonky. But I mean, hey, you know, that's that's all I know. Valvoline, ZL1, 1LE, you got a little arrow. What's that arrow for? There's a little arrow right there. I don't, you see that? There's a little arrow. Don't know what that's from. I can't tell if that's, ooh, that's a paint chip. Oh no. Oh, that's a paint chip. Uh, what's that beside the valve? That might just be race wear. I have no clue. And uh, we got a little bit of a decal issue over here. Not terrible, but definitely not good. Oh, and that uh, spoiler there doesn't really look the cleanest, but it could be a lot worse. From Lionel, that's pretty decent, and that's kind of sad. Liberty University, right there. Alex out to, I got Valvoline there. I was out the uh, Freightliner Mac Tool Simons in Cincinnati. Got Hertz, 24. I uh, got the, oh, the pop rivets. Those look so nice. Got the pop rivets. Got the exhaust there. Got a little bit of uh, something down here. A little something, something. Uh, NASCAR Cup Series. Got the NASCAR race car. William Byron. Now, this paint scheme is pretty clean for, you know, a race win because it's Daytona. Um, it's either you get beat up and win or you don't get beat up at all and win. So you got the front end here, got a little bit of rubber build up, not really a lot at all. It's like there's no rubber build up whatsoever, it seems like. So yeah, very, very clean. So, you stop motion people out there, if you can find this die cast, get it. If you can, get it. Now, here's why. Because if you don't have a very good Authentics line for your Walmarts, I don't know, say they don't really get waves, I have a pretty good feeling this will be in a wave. For it, for it being Byron and getting a win, even though it's a dual win, and it sold really well, I am I have a feeling it's going to be in the Authentics line. Now, with that said, there's going to be scalpers. Just like every other wave, there's going to be scalpers. They're going to get it, 
They're going to sell it for like three times the price. So if you can get it, whether in your store or on a website, cough, cough, website, uh, for a good price, I would. I really, really would. It's probably a good idea. I have a feeling this might become rare, but as of right now, it's very, very hard to find. So definitely recommend picking it up. Now, for the comparison, let's see uh, see the differences. Now, I'm not going to go paint scheme wise because it's the same paint scheme, different colors. I'm mainly talking about the sponsors. So, uh, everything looks fine right here. As in fine, I mean looks about the same. That's out on the hood. Same there. Uh, 24, I out the coating systems on the roof. Same there. Uh, deck lid. Same there. Yep, that's about the same. The back, of course, is going to be different because of sea glass and whatever. Uh, so, Z01, 1LE. Oh, why does that say Z01? Did I? This Byron only says Z01. Not Z01, 1LE. Is it, didn't the Elliot do that too? Huh. I don't know, but there's Z01, 1LE and Z01 on the other ones for whatever reason. Is that a coating systems? 24. You know, that's, that's there. Uh, does it, okay, no, the Byron nameplates are the same. I thought the left one was a little bit bigger than the right one. I was like, what is that about? But yeah, so comparison, pretty much the same other than the paint scheme. That's, that's about it. The 24 is white instead of yellow. Uh, the dark blue is a, uh, what was that? Sea glass blue. And then the orange, yellow, and red is just all orange and a little bit of yellow. I didn't even notice it faded to yellow. That's kind of cool. I just actually realized that. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's the comparison. So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching this diecast review. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next video.